Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And today's video, we are going to be testing out the um, Coco 83 or Coconut 83, whatever it goes by. Um, and as you guys may or may not know, I've only worked with one kind of wax before. So this is a brand new wax that I'm gonna be working with and I'm really, really excited because I've always wanted to test out coconut wax and see how I liked it. Um, and if you guys are wondering, I did get the start kit from California Candle Supply. So um, I have not opened it yet and it's been sitting in my living room for about a week now um, just because I hadn't had a chance to do a video but I want to do a full unboxing for you of the starter kit um, and just kind of do like a reaction to it and telling you guys how I like it and um, obviously showing you guys how I'm making the candles. Um, I won't be able to do a test of it but I will do a follow-up video in maybe like a week or so just to show you guys how I like um, the cold throw, the hot throw, just kind of do a little mini review on it. Um, so without further ado, I will go ahead and open up this box finally. Okay, we got some packing peanuts. And this, I will just tell you guys everything that comes in the starter kit. So we got some cotter pins, which is great um, because you guys know I love my cotter pins. We got some wicks, we got some wick stickers. What else do we have in here? Oh, I'm guessing these are the jars. Oh, look at how cute these are. These are so cute. We got some dye chips. So we got green dye chip. We got a red dye chip and a blue dye chip. And I will be doing everything um, according to the instructions. Um, so I'm not gonna try to deviate from anything. Hopefully I won't try to do that. Um, and then I will go over all of the sample scents that I got as well. What is this? Oh, is this the picture? Oh my gosh, how do they pack everything in here? So a pouring pitcher, which I'm so happy to get this starter kit. Just pretty much in order to get another one of these because I've been needing another one for so long. We have the invoice and I wonder if they put in the instructions. Yep, they do. So instructions, so I will go over that as I go along. We're gonna follow the instructions today. And then let me just unwrap all these jars. Okay, what else is in here? Oh, duh, we got the wax. Ah, there it is. Okay, so this is 10.6 ounces or 300 grams of wax. And they come individual in these little jar or these little um jars <laughs> these little like slabs so the only thing i have to admit you guys that i probably won't be using is the pocket thermometer only because initially i was thinking i was not going to be using that one and i have my other one that i got from california candle supply so out of everything that's probably the only thing i'm not going to be using so what we got in the starter kit is we have this four pound pitcher we have three 300 gram blocks of coconut 83 wax um, we have six of these little, I believe they're six ounce votives is what they're called. They're little glass jars. And then we got the scents and I think I got a free scent along with it. So it comes with three different scents you can choose from. And I just chose some random ones to try out. Um, I chose, okay, so I chose sun wash linen and we always know I got to do a smell test. Okay, that smells like, it smells good. It smells like laundry detergent. Um, it smells like a very popular laundry detergent, like dryer sheet type of scent. I got chocolate, only because I'm like, I've never tried chocolate before with a scent. Okay, yeah, that's chocolate. Definitely chocolate. Uh, we got gardenia, which I need to add to my line because it's just, it's such a pretty scent. I like that scent a lot. And then fresh peach, which is just, I mean, just the best. I love it so much. Um, I think the fresh peach was actually my sample one. So um, I will probably, okay, I'm gonna sit the gardenia out and we're gonna do the sun washed linen, the chocolate and the fresh peach. For the peach one, I'll do a little bit of the red dye chip to try to get like a, like a light pinkish reddish color. I don't know if that's gonna work out, but we'll try. Um, obviously the chocolate color. I mean, I guess I could mix all of those dyes together to get like a brown color, but 
I don't really want to do that. Okay, and then I will show you guys up close so you can see. So we got, oh, they gave us some warning stickers too. That's cute. So these are just warning stickers you want to make sure you're putting on your um, candles when you make them, whether or not you're giving them out. Just for friends and family, you want to make sure they all have warning labels on them um, just as a precaution. I should probably clean out these jars, just wipe them down. Also, I'm sorry if you hear my dog bark or growl. Um, in, a, in a video like this, I don't really have that much editing I can do because when I do certain things, I can't really redo it. So I apologize and he apologizes for being so rude. Um, what size and what kind of wicks are these? I'm gonna actually look and see what did we get? Um, it doesn't say. Great. Um, I think these are CD wicks. Um, actually, let me look it up. Okay, so this is directly from the website. So the kit includes, oh, I was wrong. This is, this is a two pound pouring pitcher. Are we sure this isn't a four pound one? Hmm. This looks like a four pound one to me. Um, moving on. Thermometer fragrance oils. You can choose one ounce of your fragrance oils from the drop down menu. Um, you get three of them. You get the dye chips. They pick it for you, red, green, and blue. You get um, a 10.6 ounce bags of coconut 83 wax. You get three of them. Um, you get uh, six six ounce glass tumblers. So that's what these are called. Um, you get CD6 wicks. So that is these wicks that go for the jars. Um, you get the wick stickers, which are these right here. And then you get cotter pins, six of them to be able to hold it. Uh, and then you get the warning label and then the instruction sheet. So I'm glad I went over that with you guys just so I wasn't throwing all these things out here. So we're gonna go over the instructions together and have fun and do this. Okay, so set up, start by setting up your pouring area. That's something I need to remind myself to do when I'm making my own candles. Uh, wick your glass by peeling off a sticker from your included wick sticker. Um, Devil sided adhesive. I'll show you guys. I, know, I, I got this. I know what I'm doing. Okay, so let me clean out the jars. So this is just how I like to make sure that my jars are clean enough and that they will take the adhesive of the wick sticker properly. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of rubbing alcohol and just wipe down these jars. I have not made candles with clear glass jars in so long. So this will be interesting. It'll be fun to be able to see what they look like. Is it bad that I wanna make them colorless? Well, I think I'm gonna make the chocolate one colorless. I don't know, maybe, you know what? I said I was gonna follow the directions. So maybe I'll color one of them. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and wick them after they've been wiped down with alcohol. And I'm gonna take the sticker off, put it on here first at the end of the wick, peel this off so then we can go ahead and stick it on. Um, and then, let me see, do I have a pen or something I can use? I do. So we're gonna use this pen and not get it stuck to my hair. Good thing I'm not selling these, but I'm just going to eyeball it um, if these were my jars and I could see through them, I would probably design one of those cool little wick centering things to be able to get a perfectly centered wick. But right now, we're just eyeballing it. I'm gonna take this through, this cotter pin, push it through, and then I pull up on it to make sure that it's stable. It's gonna look something like that. And I'm just gonna do it for the rest of them. I went ahead and wicked all of the jars so they're all here and from what I'm reading one of these blocks will fill two of these um, jars so the directions say to heat it up to um, 190 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit 
oh my goodness gracious. This melted a little bit in transit, I can totally tell. Either that or it just kind of is messy like soy tan and it just kind of gets everywhere. So I'm not gonna try to touch that, I'm gonna pour that in there. Got the double boiler method going on today because, I mean, it's all we got. And especially when um, it's a new person getting started with the starter kit, that's what you're gonna wanna use um, if you're um, kind of a new beginner and you're watching this because you're wondering if this is a starter kit that you should get. So um, that's just something that you should know. You don't have to have a burner like this. You can do it right on your stove. Just have a pot that you're not gonna be cooking with later on. Um, get a cheap pot, go to a thrift store or somewhere like Ross or something where they're gonna have a really cheap selection of pots. For me, this pot is actually a little bit too um, short. So try to get just a little bit of a higher pot just because I do notice some splashing. So that's just a tip for you guys. So basically what I'm gonna do now is just uh, make sure that it's going to be getting to that 190 to 200 degrees Fahrenheit that the directions are requiring for this wax. Um, and again, the instructions say never leave this unattended. So don't just leave this sitting here and go outside or go do something else. You wanna make sure that um, you are not leaving this unattended because that could be very dangerous. I will say the one thing that might be a little bit of an issue for um, anybody that's a beginner and for me even, is that the instructions say that one of these blocks will fill two of these. Um, but if you're a new beginner when you're pouring candles, you might pour a little bit too much in there um, and then it would make the other one short. So what I'm gonna do in this video is just show you guys um, how you can measure on a scale and be able to get the correct weight. Um, that way you aren't overfilling one and then having uh, another one that's too short. So it looks like these are 300 grams, so um, these will be filled to 150 grams each. Okay, so the wax is at about 190 with this double boiler method. It's really hard to get it hot, so I've been sitting here waiting. Um, so what we're gonna do is do the fresh peach one first, and I'm going to do, I want it a, like a lighter color. So they said add the whole dye block. I'm gonna do just a little piece of it just to show you guys at this point you're able to put in the dye block. So I like to keep it on the burner when I put the dye block in. And you wanna add the dye block in when it's hot because you wanna make sure that it gets dissolved enough within the wax. Okay, now it says um, to add the fragrance oil. So after you've added your color, you can now um, add in one one ounce bottle of fragrance oil. Um, and so we're gonna do the peach one first. And I did the calculations, and this is 9.3% fragrance oil, so pretty good. Usually, they, usually places recommend the one ounce to one pound of fragrance oil, so this is pretty refreshing. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys what I mean about weighing it on the scale. So we're looking for 100, and let me get it off of the towel. We're looking for 150 grams. So I'm gonna put this on the scale. I'm gonna tear it off, and that made it down to zero. And now I'm going to pour this in here and do my best to stop it at around 150 grams. One forty nine. Should I try to do just a little splash? One fifty. Cool. That wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Moving it might be harder though. This could be hot. It looks like Jello. I never make colored candles, so that's kind of fun. Okay, now we're gonna pour this one. And now that I know that I already did one hundred and fifty grams in that one. I'm able to just pour this one without having to measure it. Whoa. Okay. There's more, huh? Oh. Duh, Erica. I'm acting like I've never made candles before. If you guys know why that was more in the comments, don't watch the rest of this. Leave a comment below and let me know why that overflowed more than what I thought it would. So that gave me more of a liquid volume than what I thought it was going to. Um, and it 
was a lot higher. So I measured out 150 grams each thinking it was gonna fill it um, to a certain amount, but I started overfilling that one way past the first one. Um, the reason is because I added weight to it. So I added 28 more grams onto it. So it should be 328 divided by two and not 300 divided by two because it's not just the weight of this. It's also, this is adding weight and volume as well. So my mistake. Okay, so the second um, batch of candles, the second block is almost done. And um, one thing I wanted to mention is that I use Soy 10 from California Candle Supply. And so far, um, this is pretty similar, a very similar process to what I do to make my own candles. Um, even the smell of it smells like my Soy 10. So very interesting. So I'm interested to know um, what these look like when they are all um, in a solid form. And I'm interested later on to test them and see what they, um, how they do and how they perform during the burn test. Now we are going to be adding in the sun wash linen to this one. And again, this is just one of the ones I'm not making colored. I'm only gonna be coloring the fresh peach one just so you guys could see what it looks like with adding the dye chip in there. So we're adding all of that into there. Just gonna mix this around. Oh, that's very strong. Okay, so now we are gonna be doing the second one. And this time we're gonna be doing 164 grams and not 150 grams to um, add in the fragrance oil as well. So 28 divided by two is 14. So adding 14 to the 150 would be 164. And I am getting this all over the place. Okay, so let's go ahead and do 164. Okay, 164. Wow, this really just smells like laundry detergent. Okay, so next one, I don't have to measure it out because I already did that. So these two should be much closer now because I did the proper measurements. Close, very close, but still one of them was a little bit more full, so maybe my scale was slightly off. Funny enough, my other ones are a lot more even because I just started pouring that one in thinking it was gonna be perfect, but it wasn't, so uh, now I'm gonna wipe this clean and then we're gonna make the last one. All right, we are on the last and final scent, you guys, which is the chocolate one that I'm most interested about to see how that performs um, in a test and how it smells, like the hot throw and the cold throw of it. I'm really interested to see, so I'm gonna take this off. And I already ruined this by getting the ring around it um, just from it being metal, so that's always fun. So I'm gonna pour this in here. Oh, splashed on me. Make sure to do it more gentle than I did, just dumping it all in here. And it actually smells really good. Usually I'm not a huge fan of like, I don't know, just like an artificial chocolate smell, but it actually smells pretty good. And for the holiday season, I'm actually looking for a scent that I can make into like a hot chocolate type scent. So if I like this, I might use this for like a hot chocolate um, for something that I have planned for a name and like a little story behind it and everything during the holidays. So I'm excited to see how this turns out. All right, last and final one. Let's see how this goes. All right, so I'm gonna tear that off, pour this in. And again, if these were actually my jars, I would be able to get a little mechanism made to where I'd know exactly how full to fill them up. And to be honest, this would actually be a little bit too full for me if I was making these candles to sell. I just, I don't know, I feel like they're just, they're just a little too full. You can see more on this one right here. It's like almost all the way up to the top. Maybe that's normal. Maybe I'm just so used to my candles that have like this much space because I have my lid that I need to um, make sure that I have enough room for. So maybe that's just me. And there we have it. All I do, paper towel. And I take my skewer and I just like to get all of the scent and the extra wax that's holding the scent out of it. 
and it works well for me. I mean, I was able to do three very different scents. So I did a fruity scent, which was the peach one, the fresh and clean, the sun washed linen, and then the chocolate scent. And none of them really contaminate each other from just doing this type of cleaning from it. So I know there's a lot of people that will um, take like alcohol or something and wipe it down afterwards. I don't do that. I just basically wipe it down. I move on to the next one. Um, I don't spend too much time with it, but that was today's video. That was kind of fun to be able to make some different candles. I put some dye in my candles. So that was different. And what I'm going to do next is once these are all in a solid form, I'm going to go in and use these warning stickers at the bottom. And the nice thing about the size of these is that they will cover up the size of the wick. So I never like when candles show at the bottom, you can see the wick mark at the bottom of it. I just, I don't like it. So I like the fact that wick stickers, um, because one, they're essential, but two, they are used to cover up that wick mark, um, especially for candles that are clear like that to where you can see it. So I'm gonna find it really interesting when these um, go into a solid form. We can kind of examine it, see what they look like. Um, I will admit that my double boiler doesn't get that hot. So for some of them, I didn't quite get it up to that 190 degrees. It just wouldn't get any hotter. Um, so that could affect these. And I'm sure people who are like coconut wax fans, you guys probably know that you got to get it pretty hot is what I've been reading. So we'll see how these perform. Um, and I will make sure to follow up with a video in the next week or so of a burn test so you guys can see. Um, and I will probably be showing you guys a little clip um, a little bit later on today of what they look like when they are all solidified. Okay, one thing that I noticed here real fast, you guys, is look at those little flakes right there. Is that like coconut flakes? Am I going crazy? Because this is coconut wax, but what is that? I don't know. And because I can see it on this one, obviously those ones are hardening up a little bit more, but on this one that I just poured, I see those little flakes in there. It's now Sunday and um, I just want to show you guys what they look like all solidified. I forgot to go in um, last night to show you guys. So this is what it looks like. Pretty smooth tops. Um, don't mind what the wick looks like. Like right there, I had moved. I tried to save and make these a little bit more um, centered and it didn't end up working out too well. So this is what they look like. Um, they look really, really smooth and nice. Um, and I'm really, really happy with the way that they turned out. But anyways, guys, that is today's video. My final, final thoughts of this starter kit is that I think that it gives you a very easy way to get started with candle making. The hardest thing that I think would be for most people is pouring it out, especially if you are not aware of exactly um, the, the difference and the fact that candles should be measured in weight and not volume, that can get really confusing. So I think that a lot of candle makers need to make that known um, and they don't necessarily make that known. Something else that I noticed on this sheet is that it says that you will make two seven ounce candles but that's not true um, because it might be seven ounces in volume but the candle itself is gonna be a 5.78 ounce candle so that's something else that I also noticed um, again I know that a lot of people will say if it's a seven ounce jar in volume then it's a seven ounce candle not necessarily true, but um, you know, it's kind of neither here nor there when you're just getting started with candle making. But eventually that is something that you're going to want to learn because it is important. Something else that you'll need to know is that you will need a scale with you when you are um, doing this as well as the pot that I had mentioned and then the burner either on the stove or getting the hot plate um, that you can use if you're not gonna be using it in the kitchen and making candles in the kitchen. Um, but. Other than that, I mean, it was pretty self-explanatory with the instructions, um, really easy to work with, and so far so good from what it's looking like. I can kind of bring this up so you guys can see a little bit of what it's looking like right now, and it's looking pretty good. So I'm really happy with this. I'm really happy that I was able to test it out. Um, and who knows, maybe later on in uh, my, 
uh, expanding my horizons of trying out different waxes because this is not going to be the only starter kit that I'm going to be reviewing. I have actually another one coming in the mail um, and that will be a surprise for you guys. Um, but I have more ideas and more like starter kits that I want to try out just so you guys can see firsthand what comes in the starter kit and what I think about it, especially since I'm trying out these waxes for the first time as well. So that is going to do it for today's video. If you guys liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Memory Box Candle Co. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.